Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me for class again today. And I have no idea what number it's up to. I'll check that later. <laughs> but it's going to be Thursday when you see this, so it's Thursday's class. What we're doing today is a double page again and just a general page that finishes off our flip out from the week before. Very easy. And on our other page, we'll be doing a little surprise origami box that you can pop all your little journal cards, tickets, tags, other ephemera, photos in. Now, just in case I forget at the end, I'll show you Sunday's class. This is Sunday's class. And what I want to use are coffee filters. Now, you hear people using coffee filters and all the rest. I'm in Australia. We don't use coffee filters that much over here I'm sure they were used couldn't find them anywhere i finally found some in the supermarket the other week so hang on a moment where is it so if you're in australia both coles and woolies have them and they're this brand the original harris's there are 40 filter papers in there three dollars so, you know, I've got enough to do me lots and lots and lots of journals. So I wanted to play around with those when I found them. So that's what we're going to use for Sunday's class. And it is just a flip with a basic, just originally starting to play with our coffee filters. So it's still the pocket that you can pop your journal card in. Just decorated on the front with... A little pocket and a tag on the back and then we've just done a basic fabric cluster on a bulb pin at the top okay and then I've popped a belly band in in the same paper that I've used and I've just used some scrap scrapbook paper for that so that's Sundays today's right we're going to do our base papers first we're going to pop all this on and then we're going to work on our little surprise origami box. It is so easy, so easy. So I'll shut this one, pop it somewhere. I'll pop it over here where the new one is. Right, we'll get out our one that we're working on. Let's flip it open. So we've got this that we did last Sunday. Still haven't put anything on that. And remember, we didn't fold or glue this down because we're going to do the rest of that flip because it's part of the next page. I have popped my base background papers on just to quicken it up a little bit today. And I have used, again, my Witchcraft Do You Do pages pack, set one. This is page one from it. I love the grungy effect. I love the colours in it. Still gives me my, my vintage colours, but it adds that touch of colour to it as well so all we're going to do with this and i've got my folder with today's bits and pieces we're going to need a book page so here's our book page just a basic book page but what i want to do to it is so i want something down this side i'm going to trim off down here so that my writing finishes exactly on it we might actually use the trimmer if it'll fit in the trimmer. It'll make it a little bit easier and quicker because I can do that over top of the book. Yep, that'll fit in there. So I'll just slide that into the trimmer and I'm going to trim that off where the writing is so that I finish on the writing. And then all I'm going to do is just tear straight down. Not straight down. I want a little bit of action going on in it I suppose is the best word so I'm just going to give it a little bit of shape like so okay then we're going to trim this up so that it fits on the page so we're going to cut across here across our writing at the top so again it finishes on that writing uh, if I get that fairly straight oh yeah right and then our bottom piece we can trim off when we pop it on. So this is going to go down here and then I can cut this bottom piece off. Now our other piece that we cut off this, which is 
that side. Okay, so this one's turned that way. This one I'm going to turn over. I'm going to trim again straight down there so that it's right on the edge of that writing again. Lifting that up a bit further. Right on the edge of my writing, like so. And again, I'll trim off the top section so that it's right on the edge of the wording as well. Pop those away. And the same for that one. So this one's going to go here, and this one's going to go on there. Now you can see with this one, I didn't need to put my washi tape because this was all nicely held in. So all I've done is used a brown ink and I used a slightly lighter brown ink that I've been inking just straight down that spine just so it wasn't that yellowed colour, just to give it more of a brown. That's just me and what I do when I use altered books. It's up to you. You might want to stick with the washi regardless all the way through so it's cohesive with that. I'm not much into cohes cohesion. Um, I just let it all go and just do as I go. So they're my two bits of book pages, but I don't want them to look like that. So I'm going to sit this one aside, sit that back out there so that I can see where it's up. I'm going to move this and use my glass mat. Sorry about the shine on it, but the glass mats just work a treat. So I've now got one going that way and one going that way. I'm going to get a little bit of antique linen and just go over it. Just make it a little bit grungy, just a little bit. I don't need it too much. So you can see it's not perfectly um, blended or anything else, but it just gives it a touch more. I don't need to go much past there. Oh, sorry, just gives it a touch more color through it. And you can see that I'm just going over it everywhere. I'm just giving it ins and outs, a little bit mottled. I've got major areas that I've missed. I'll go back over those. So I've got that so you can see it was that it's now that so now what I'm going to do is going to my next color that I have sitting here which is my brushed corduroy which is that mid brown that I like so there's probably still some on that a little bit so I'm just I'm pushing a little bit harder now because there's not a great deal of ink left on that one but I'm more going into my circles now to blend it properly and taking it right back to that. So again, you can see, that's what it was, that's what it is now. So if I've got enough ink, I might have to put a little bit on, but I'm gonna have to go light until that ink has dried a little bit on here, because otherwise I'll end up with a really large area of darker ink. So I'm just going in circles. All right, they don't have to be exactly the same. So I've got no real big white patches, but they're fairly evened with a slight mottled look. So now that I've got that, I'm just gonna wipe that bit a little bit. And what I wanna do is with my Distress Stain in the Vintage Photo, which is a mid-brown again, it's just, it's just the mid-brown that I tend to pick up whenever I'm spraying. I'm not a good sprayer, I tend to spray everything. And if you look over here, these all have splots on them from where I've inked or where I've sprayed. So take it off and hold it back a little bit. So if I hold it over here, you can see where I am. Hold it down just a little bit like that. Okay, that's that one. I sit him over, wipe that. Do the same with this one. And I've really just given them two quick little spurts. I don't want too much. Um, and I just want that slight effect. Now, to clean my mat before I put, because you can see it's all there, before I put my book back on it, I'm just going to use a little bit of water, like so. Fold that to a fairly clean area and just wipe that over. See how it looked fairly clean, but there was still a lot of, Distress ink sitting on there. There's also a lot of glue and scratches and all sorts of bits. But anyway, 
Now, again, with this paper towel, because I'm not patient and I've still got bits in here, which you can see are still quite wet, I could wait for them to dry. I could pull out the heat gun, dry them up, or I can get my paper towel and just lightly go over them. They've already got the areas that they're going to go on to. It's not going to change that. But what it's going to do is sop up the extra so that now I can use that straight away. So same with this one, pull it over. Doesn't matter that that's on there. And all I'm doing is just lightly patting it to get rid of the really wet areas and just sopping up the extra bits. So now I've got those. So if we pull this one back out again, so that one and that one, they are dry now. And what I'm going to do is have one adhered here and one adhered there. Okay. Again, I will go back into my darker ink now because I want my edges done, including the bits that run down the spine. But I don't want too much on them. I just want that edge. This bit I will do once I've popped it actually on here. But this bit I want to look like it's burnt, like it's been, you know, burnt and come back away, which is why I've got this sort of angle going on. And so now you can see I'm just rubbing it like that. What it's doing is curling it up as well. So it gives it more of that burnt edge. So now look where it sits on the paper. See the difference? See how it now looks kind of burnt compared to that? That's why I like to ink, especially when I'm doing torn edges. So I'll just go down here again. Just a little bit. Miss the bottom because I'll trim that off and then straight along like so. It is no good for your blending sponges um, because it will cut through them. You can see after a while they die, but it gives a wonderful effect. And you can't get that sort of depth and that sort of burnt look with just these sorts of brushes. You'll get a nice soft edge, but you won't get this burnt look. And that's where you, these still work a treat. You know, we're all swapping over to these makeup type brushes. And I love them for going around my die cuts and things like that. But for that sort of effect, you need to go back to your foam. Or old makeup sponges and dip it into your into your ink and go down the edge that way. So this is going to adhere and it's going to come in just after that tw uh, that 32, which is good. So I'm just going to grab a piece of slightly non-glued paper. Grab a glue. Yes, this time I've gone back to the Bostic Blue. It depends on what's on special at the time when I need to get glue. And I managed to get a four pack of this on special. So... Um, but it's drying very quickly. I think I'm I'm liking the other one slightly better at the moment, but it does still glue, it does still work. So we will use it because it's in my cupboard drawer, whatever. That's gonna go down there. I'll grab my on that side. And we just wanna make sure we go right into our spine. Like so. Do the same on the other side. I'll grab another piece of that because that one's all very, very wet. Doing this one. I'm so happy with everybody joining. It's just, I, if I haven't got back to your comments, I'm sorry. I will get back. Um, I read them all and then usually get back to them later. Um, but it's been so nice. All these comments with everybody joining in, enjoying class, etc. So thank you all so much. It's been wonderful. Right, this one, I'm going to pop him in up there like so. Down along this, might need to move that up a little bit. And that's why I like the glue sticks, because I do have time to shuffle them a little bit. Down there, that could do with a little bit extra. We might, I might need to put a little bit extra, um, what do you call it? I've already got my sprayed edge there, so I'm just, that's what was left on that one. And we'll go back to the brushed corduroy. Down to that. There we go. That'll take that down. Yep, beautiful. 
and I will trim those off. Fold that in there. See if I can trim it this way. Probably needs my scissors. That one I can do because I'm a righty, so I can do this one. Look, I was quiet because I'm concentrating. All right, that's that one. And my other one I'm going to use with my blade. So just a little mat. I'm going to fold that out so I don't get it caught. Sitting that round just in like so. And I'll grab my blade and my little ruler. And just straight down. Now my mat doesn't cover right to the edge, but my ruler will take the last bit off. So those bits both need to be edged in my black, in my black, in my dark brown. So that one and that one. And there we go. So we've got those ones done now. We need to pop something on here. And in my little folder of tricks, I've got, I've got a little scrap piece of scrapbook paper that I want to make a, what do you call it? Pocket. <laughs> and I want, ah, what have I not got? Let's have a look. My little folder has not got everything in it. That's just straight on that with that, so I'll ink around that one. That one was a nice, easy one. Just give me a little bit extra on the edge. And I'm gonna fold that in that way and go straight up the edge. Like so. This one, I like that section there. And I'll lose most of that though, won't I? If I put my thumb hole in, so if I go to there, Grab my pencil and it's going to go straight down that way. Set that on there. Trimmer, scissors, whatever works for you. Blade for me. All right, that'll make a gorgeous little tag later. So that's this one. I'm going to put a thumb hole in that one. So what's my size on this? It's around about eight centimetres. Sorry if I've jumped over. I'm going to put a mark at the four, which is my half. I'm going to grab my oval, because I tend to use ovals. Doesn't mean you have to. And I'll try and find that pencil mark. There it is. That worked well, didn't it? I think it's there. No, it's not there, you know. We might have to go this side. I'm just trying to be good. All right, I'll go that side. Then I can at least see it. Right. Now I can see it. Setting that in so that it's nice and straight. I've got one eye closed, so I know it's going to be straight. And there we go around that one. I might need some more ink on that. That's better. So we've just got a basic pocket going on in this one again. And that can be decorated on the front with all your little bits and pieces. And that can be adhered down on that one straight away. Didn't check my glue prior to. That's because I've got a new glue and I didn't change the tip when I got the new glue out. I used the old tip and it's starting to clog up. I'm going to have to change it or at least run some hot water through it. It's there. It's just not coming out on the tip. Right. That might be tonight's... Um, 
challenge to myself to remember to actually fix up the glue. I only ever remember to do it when I actually want it. And I'm either one, filming, or two. Oh, I finally started my Australiana journal. So it's full of Australian ads and tidbits of information and things like that. Um, but I'm having so much fun with it. When I go to use my glue and it doesn't work, I just stick a pin and won't move. <laughs> So, at some stage, I will remember to fix the glue. Right. So, there's that one. All I did on the other one was popped a few things again from my favourite sheet. Again, witchcraft do you do? The Mix and Match Mini Journals Kit 1. And I've got a couple of these printed out. And I printed them out in... Um, two to a page type thing if it was that way so I just printed it out on my normal one but as though it was on an A5 sheet and it's made them a little bit smaller for things like this okay and that would have been in here and I just yeah they just work a treat so it's one of my favorite ones that I use all the time so that's that one this one we're going to pop some lined paper now I did have that here just before I started I moved it because I thought I was using it for the last one. So here it is. Hang on. Yeah, look at that. I knew I had it out for a reason. So here's my lined paper. And it's going to go in here like that. So I'm thinking that I can trim down there on that line. And this is just normal school paper the loose leaf sheets and coffee dyed all right so where do i want the next one we'll move that so that it's not in our way you're going to go right up there right up there and you're going to finish right about there to there okay and that can be just straight glued on that rule is not going to work, is it? Need my longer one. There we go. So that'll go back up there where I had it. I knew I had it for a reason. Move you. This will go in here. That'll sit nicely in that and allow it all to fold. So I'll ink around that one now, and then we'll glue that straight down. Then we can glue this little tab back down, and it's finished, just ready to have something on it. Anything you like, you can pop on it. Um, I popped, as I said before, I've got a flower on the other side. On this side, I've got a little butterfly and some lights. Oh, now that's in my folder. So... Put some glue on that, going that way, because I want the dark side, just to keep giving me different um, variances of all this coffee dyed paper. I like the blue glue because I can see where I've put it, but it's drying really quickly these days. It never used to. Um, and I get the feeling that it won't stick. It does stick. Um, I've gone back to ones that I did two, three nights ago when I pulled this one out. And they're sticking beautifully. But it's just changing colour so rapidly these days. Oh, uh, was that way? That one. You're in, you're in, you're in, you're in. All right. Smooth down our air bubbles. If we can. I'm just going to fold that one over. So you can see I've used a lighter colour on this side and then I've used this really dark colour on this side. This one can now be stuck back down as well. We'll stick this one. Like so. That can be stuck down. Make sure I've got no glue coming out anywhere. Lovely. 
And to decorate that one, all we're going to do is, I've got that in the folder. There it is, look. I've got a little bit of lace and I've already got a butterfly cut out, again, from that mini journal kit from Witchcraft Do You Do? And all I wanna do, such a quick and easy way to decorate a tab. And I pop that through the center. I'm just gonna chop that bit off there. So I'm not using, trying to worry about using all of it and having it sitting there and flopping around. Now that I've used that, it can go back in the drawer. Like so, um, that side. All right. So this time I'm going to turn it right round that way. Can you still see where we are? Yes. And I want, I think I want it that way. Like that. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of, that's Bertha. Gosh, you're fast, Bertha. She's going to ding six. And it's only ten to six. So just a quick bit of this. Don't need too much. I'm not sticking the Titanic together. Down like that, don't need to stretch my lace and I can trim this up later on. And my little butterfly can go on there like that. So a little bit of this glue again, because that'll go over the lace nicely. All right, and then we'll do our little origami box. I've already inked around my butterfly. I do need to have a look at it like that, though. Don't want it to go past my tab, as in out that way. It can go a little bit onto this one. Right, how hard was that? And doesn't that look a treat? So this will go that way. It'll still have something stuck on there whether it's the same thing, whether I just get a flower, whether it's something musical to go with that page. So we've got that, we've got that, we're gonna turn back to here and we're gonna set this aside. And now what we're going to do is our little box. Let's shut that so that it's not in our way. Now, if I pull out the original one, this is our little box. Now you can make this out of anything you want anything what i plan to make it with out of is just take off some old music it's some old music blah i got music on the plane some old matte paper okay um i've coffee dyed this and this is the color the side that i like the most so the side that you like the most is the side that's going to be facing you you're far better with double-sided but, um, yeah, the side that you want to see is the side that needs to face you. What I will do, because this has just been pulled out of a book, a book and coffee dyed, I will straighten this edge up. Now, as I said before, you can do this out of anything. You can do this in any size you want. So whether you've picked up a piece of just straight coffee dyed paper, um, whether it's, i sit you there. And you're on there. Let's have a look. That should be like that. And I can straighten that. Um, because I'll show you how to work the measurements out of anything that you're using. Because we're all doing different books. We're all doing using different products, etc. So I thought instead of just giving you a measurement... For a specific one, I'll show you how to do it in any size. So I'm just giving myself some room. So start with this landscape, okay? Long ends, left to right. With whatever paper it is that you're using, find your measurement. Find out how much it is. And I think for me this time it'll be easier if I work centimetres because they're smaller. You know I'm no good with so many sixteenths and all the rest. If you've got a calculator, which I do have. So my piece of paper is 
27.7 centimeters long. So 27.7, we're going to divide it by three. 9.2 roundabout, okay? So what I wanna do, I don't know why I'm picking up that one. I've got a, a thing here. I'm going to measure in nine, two. That's in centimeters. Makes no difference what yours is. Whatever the length of your paper, divided in three. So nine, two is my, my thirds. So up again, up here, nine, two. Okay, what I'm going to do now is fold my right side over to those markings and then push that down. Now this is only book page, it's paperweight. I pulled out a bone folder before. Give that a nice crease. Okay, open it up, fold your left side over to that crease. that it's nice and straight fold it down they should look at that don't you love it when measurements actually turn out right so give that one a good crease as well so now what you're looking at is that let's fold it up each of these we're going to fold back on themselves with me so far this bit's nice and easy it's all really easy. It's just a bit confusing at the end. And it's probably going to be the way that I tell you. Right. So there's that one. And we're going to do the same with this side. Straight down. Now, my friend Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations. Go over and check out her channel, Jen's Arty Inclinations. She showed me how to do this. We had a craft day via messenger video <laughs> with our Facebook group of playing with paper and glue. And she showed us all how to do this. Had us in fits. Um, Lynn's done as well, I've seen on her channel. And I'm having my crack at it now. So hopefully between the three of us, if you watch each of ours, you'll find out how to do it. Go and check them out. So there's a playing with paper and glue YouTube channel with Lynn, go over and check hers out, and Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, and now Kylie at Kylie's Card Craft. So we've all had a shot. <laughs> Between the three of us, you'll work it out. Right, so now this is what we've got, okay? This is our little folded section. What we're going to do now is work out what our measurement is here. So from this fold, to the top because this is the height of our box okay so we're looking for me this is round about four and a half centimeters or if i want to go in inches you know it's one and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen sixteenths fourteen fifteen yeah you know so that's what i'm at. it's too hard so it's round about four and a half <laughs> so remember that measurement for mine. What that is going to be is our fold for the top and the bottom. Now I could score it at four and a half and fold it up. Or I could just double that measurement like I did before, which is nine. Make a mark here. Do the same on the other end. Four and a half is nine. Making sure it doesn't move is there. Do the same from the top. Nine. Do the same at this side. Now, whatever paper you have used, whatever size paper you have used, will determine what this height is. Whatever your height is, is what you need to fold your top side and your bottom side up. So with those fold, with those ones now, our bottom side is going to fold up to my nine centimetres or whatever your measurement is, the double of your measurement. Because that'll give me four and a half 
where it's folded, okay? Does that make sense? I've just found that this, for me, is easier because then I can change sizes of my paper each time. So that's that one. This one, we're going to do the same. I just need to turn it around so that I can see it without shoving my head right under the camera. So that one there, that one there. Can we see the markings? Yes, we can. So straight down, straight down. So there it is. It's a nice map. I can see which way's up and down and all the rest. So there's that, there's that, and there's that. What we're now going to do, fold this back into its original form. Okay, turn it over. Turning it over. You can see your fold mark where we just folded that there with our bottom corner. We're going to fold this up onto that line and straight in there. Does that make sense? So we've just turned the whole thing over. We're going to pick up each corner and take it down to that crease line. This corner down to the crease line and up. Try and keep it as straight as you can. All right. Do the same on the other sides. I'm just going to burnish those a little bit. All right. Do the same on the other end. Take one flap. Take it over to that crease line. Same with this one. So we're just taking the folded part down to the crease line. Like so. That's all you're folding. All right, so here, if we undo those again. There's our box now, but look, we've got these in here. Okay, what we're going to do now, you'll see where this crease line is. At the moment, we've got a mountain here and a valley here. We're just going to straighten this and turn the whole thing into a mountain. It'll just refold back on itself. That's fine. Okay, so you can see how that's folding back around and follow that crease line. And what it's done is tuck that straight under there. Okay, so that when this folds back down, it's made its little basket. Does that make sense? So this side, pick up your side, fold your mountain fold, your valley, back on itself. And it's automatically taken this bit back in, which will then fold under. Look at that. Turning it around, doing the same thing here. Make this bit where it's your mountain. Make it all mountain. Fold it in on itself. So that it's, and it automatically takes that back in. Okay, did my hands cover all of that for you? We'll try this one up like this. So here's our side. We're going to make the whole thing folded back on itself. There's that crease line. You can see it coming up. All right. And it's automatically folded that bit back around. So now we're like this. Fold those back over on themselves. These ones sitting in like that. Fold them back over on themselves. This has got its crease lines in here. We just need to give this a little bit of push in there. This has got its crease lines. That's got its crease lines. That's got its crease lines. Watch. If we're still in the centre. Are you ready? Look at that. Give that a good burnish. Okay? Give it a good crease so that it sits down on itself. If you're using scrapbook paper, which is a bit thicker, it'll still work. Look at that. It wasn't that hard. If you've missed a spot, rewind a little bit, check it out again. The only thing I need to do is these pencil marks. But I have found, for me, that that is easier because I can pick up any piece of paper that I want, no matter what the size. How trendy is that? so cool now you can ink that if you want you can leave it uninked mine i will just do my edges okay and i love old 
maps, not even really old maps, um, the big maps that I will coffee dye. And let's face it, atlases these days are secondhand everywhere. Book fairs, op shops, all the rest. They don't have to be old ones. Um, schools don't use them as much because everybody uses the internet. So what we're doing is giving them a second life. And I love coffee dyeing them. They're such awesome sizes and all the rest. And you can personalise your journals if you want with them. Because you can pick where you live or where the recipient lives or something like that. Tuck you back in. Oh, there it is. Just folds straight in. How was that? Really? Um, this is not going anywhere. No glue. No scissors. One piece of paper. And a little bit of folding. Okay. Ooh, you're right. Sorry. I just hit the microphone was what I did. Where it... Are you still in? Yes. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. So, back to our book. How are we going for time? 41 minutes. Awesome. All right. Here's our book. This one's going to sit in here. So now, and again, you can glue the whole thing in and pop it in. You can glue there and make another tuck spot in there. Tuck spots are awesome. So, or you can do one at the top. Let's make the option of if we want to do a tuck spot. So I'm just going to glue the three sides. It's nice and it's stable. It doesn't need all the glue to adhere the entire piece down. So we're just going to do three sides. All right. Like so. <laughs> now we're going to do three sides like so. Remember that there's glue on there, Kylie, and we're going to adhere this down, like so. Give them a good push. It will flatten when your book, so you can see this sitting up. If I pull out the other one, you can see how nice and flat it's sitting. The reason I like doing what we're doing with this book, as in we've pulled everything out or doing an altered book, especially this sort of one, it allows me all that bulk of all those flips and books and mini folios and all of that that we love, but don't always necessarily work in our journals because they're so thick and our journals can't take any more. Whereas this sort of one, look at that. Whereas this sort of book where we've got all this gap now will allow all of that. So let's now decorate. What have we got left in here? I've got a die cut. I've got another little butterfly. Fly and yeah, I know, I know, I know. I said I wasn't going to use stamped pieces. This is a page of ephemera. Yeah, no, it's stamped. But we'll pretend it's a page of ephemera. It's one of my favourite little stamps. And I love it because it just gives me that little bit. So I've always got coffee dyed ones of this floating around. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to put a stamp in somewhere. I can't not use them. So this one I want to cover or colour like we did with the book page, with the just the worded page. So again, and I'm not even going to worry about that side. You won't see that side. These are just old shapes from old Kaiser Craft pads. Um, I actually had, oh, and I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. It's been a while since I looked at comments before I looked at this had somebody comment that it she then pulled out her scalloped punch to create that scallop that i had in it and yeah go back to your punches look at them have a look at what you're doing and she's been able to create a pile of them ready to go so this was just another shape that's in the kaiser craft books that i've pulled out um so that they're ready to do with what i wanted whatever i want to do but you can get punches, big punches. You can get shape cutters. Or if you've got the big shots and the crickets, the silhouettes, the, I don't know, cuttlebugs, 
numerous different die cutters, be them either metal dies or like crickets and silhouettes that are all online or whatever they are these days. Um, and in saying that, yes, remember I told you the other week I'd bought a Joy, Cricket Joy. Still haven't undone it. Um, got to do that. <laughs> haven't had, just haven't had time. So here's my little cluster as per such that I'm going to pop on here. And these sorts of ones are great because, look, I can match that up, match that up to that one so that when it glues on, it's glued on that and not on the other one. You can still undo it. So I've got my nice little butterfly here. I want some on my butterfly. I want one of these Explore because it's on that. I don't know what's on my other one. So let's go Explore. Have I got an Explore anywhere else? No. I'm just gonna cut those around. Yeah, sorry, should have cut them out prior to it. See, if I'd cut them out, I could have said, told you they were ephemera. Yeah, right, right. You couldn't have told that I, you couldn't have worked out that they were a stamped image? No. No, no. Right. <laughs> Make that a little bit darker on the edge. And I want some cheesecloth, of course. I want that bit up there like that. And I want some cheesecloth, and there's always some floating around on my desk. Oh, a big chunk. Oh, a big chunk. Let's have a look. Look at that. And just chop that there. Where do I want it? Do I want it on that? Or do I want it under that? I might do it that way. So I will stick my butterfly onto that first and this is a butterfly again from witchcraft you do that um, beautiful little mini journal kit and it's from one of the front pages of it and yeah again I just I utilize it so much in all sorts of different ways shapes and forms so we're going to go up there where else did I want glue there and there. Bit of the body. Up there for now. The rest of it will all stick down once I put this on. So that's going to be there. It's going to be there because I don't really want it too straight. All right. Get off the rest of that glue. Now we'll do as I normally do and I will get some double-sided tape to adhere, I lost it, we'll use the smaller one. <laughs> Give this some love, well-worn love look, so that it's sitting in there. That one's going to sit on it like so, a little bit down there. Tease that out. That's why I like cheesecloth. Because I can do so much with it. All right. Put some little strips on that one. Anyone say the start? There it is. Turn this one over. One bit here. One bit there will be enough to hang on to it. We can peel that back up. And we're done. So next Sunday, as I said before, we'll need a coffee filter. You'll need something to do your backing with. Go up a little bit. All right, so that's caught that. Now I can glue the whole thing. Um, we will need coffee filter, some backing paper. Let's pull the other one out so that I can remember what's on it as I go. Something to cover your coffee filter front and back a doily if you want because i've then covered the back and then i've used a doily um, coffee stained normal paper doily to go over the back again to give it just a little bit more 
oomph and detail. Just going to use that. Sit you down like so. About there, I think. And I can't remember whether I've got glue up there. No, I'll get rid of that bit. Right, oh, nice quick cluster. Now when we glue this, of course, we're going to glue down that bit. And the easiest way to do that, sit your ruler there. Oh, yes, of course, this one has a line, but, you know, if it didn't have a line, we don't want to go past those little markings. So we're just going to go around, go a little bit up there, up on that one, round, like so. You want it fairly close to where it opens. Take your ruler away. Bring your book down and you're going to line it up with this line. Sliding it in. If you want to, then pick it up and then just push this edge down. Okay. Give it a good push. Make sure he's on there and he's not going anywhere. Look at that. How easy. Really. How easy was that? As I said, rewind a little bit if you need to to cover it. But once you've got it, you'll be right. Um, and if not, go and have a look at Lynn's on Playing With Paper and Glue YouTube channel or Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations. Both are very good friends of mine. So please go over and have a look at them anyway. I'd love you to. All right. So, next week, next week, next Sunday, coffee filter. So, we'll need some scrapbook paper or digitals or something to cover front and back. And then I've got a coffee stained doily that I've then cut down on here as well. We've got a little bit of paper again so that it all blends all in. Um, I've used scrap left over of the paper that I used to cover this to make my tag. Um, a little bit of scrap that I had left over from one of the other bits in the Witchcraft Do You Do kit. I've covered it with page four, I think. Um, made a belly band with the bits that were left over from that as well. And then I've used a bulb pin because I wanted to sit it far enough up so that when my book closes, I've got danglies. So when my book closes, I've got all these wonderful things sitting out. You can tuck them in if you want, like so. And they're just like that, and it's like a normal tab. But you can see how these, see how this wants to do that? Okay. Once we're still filling these, see how it now sits in nice and firm? It firms that book up and the spine up as we go because we're able to put chunky things in. Okay, so thank you for joining me for today. We've done it in under an hour. Yeah, it's because I did do those. So I promise I will put the backing on. The, see, this one's another good one. I won't need to washi tape. So the backing will go on that one. I won't be putting the backing on that one until we're in class because our coffee filter needs to go in as a flip. Okay, so if you want to do the step ahead as well, pop your backing on your right hand side and your coffee filter will be going on uh, between the backing and the page on the left hand side okay once we've covered it and all the rest it's easier once it's covered so thank you for joining me for today if you did enjoy it don't forget give me the thumbs up if you haven't yet subscribed i would love you to subscribe we are almost at 3500 subscribers who would have thunk it it is awesome thank you all so much girls for following me along with this and until next time or until sunday happy crafting bye